What's up, everybody? We are back for another episode. This one, uh, I definitely went on a rant. <laughs> Brad's blood pressure was a little elevated. I got heated, but it was for yeah. good. It was a good thing. And you um, need to know why, so don't switch the channel. I think it was question six or seven, but make sure you check them all out because yeah. loads of good information. Enjoy the episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode. Hashtag Ask Live Lean TV. Thanks for tuning in for show number 41, I think it is. 41. And uh, if you guys are listening over on the podcast, thank you so much. We just, uh, we're also uploading our Live Lean TV and Live Lean TV for Women episodes, the audio versions, over on the podcast as well. So if you can't watch the videos of Live Lean TV and Live Lean TV for Women, you can catch them over on the podcast as well. So make sure you go over to iTunes or SoundCloud or Stitcher and subscribe so you never miss an episode, even if you have to listen to us while you're working out or in the car or wherever you may be. So you doing good? Yeah, podcasts are awesome to listen. I like listening to them while I'm doing food prep in the mm -hmm. kitchen. That's what I like to do. I know you listen to them when you're like walking the dog yep. and stuff like that. So there's a lot of opportunities where you can listen and be doing something else. So then you're multitasking. Exactly. Good. So make sure you get over there and you join us not only visually, but uh, audio. Audio, audio, audibly. Audibly, yes, audibly, audibly as well. So mm -hmm. let's jump into the show. First question from Twitter from Chris Bravo says, how can I maintain my gains while on or while traveling? Okay, yeah, we get a lot of traveling questions. It seems like traveling is very popular to do these days, which is great. We love to travel. You guys have seen us travel a lot if you follow our vlogs and stuff. Um, not as much now that we have a baby, but we do still travel and obviously we want to keep our gains too. So a couple of things that we do is we pack snacks from home yep. because Let's be real, airport food is limited and very expensive, especially if you're trying to eat healthy at an airport, you're gonna pay the price for it. Well, you gotta pay the price for anything in the airport. Yes, yeah, whether it's healthy or not, it's still gonna cost you like 15 bucks for any meal. So bring your food from home as much as you can. And what you can do is buy disposable Tupperware, like the Ziploc kind or whatever that you can throw away after a use. And then you can pack yourself like a nice salad or some, you know, protein and vegetables, some kind of like meal, you know, that you would normally eat and just pack it to go, put a fork in it. You're good to go. Yeah. Um, so just make sure that, um, you separate things so they don't get soggy. So that's true. what we do is like, if, if we have a salad or whatever, we'll put the, put dressing, the dressing separately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so rather than putting on, put the chicken breast or the protein source somewhere like yeah. in Tupperware away from the vegetables. And you'll learn these things yeah. as you get like more experience with packing food to go, but that is going to be your best bet for like how to maintain your gains while traveling. Cause the number one thing, the number one problem with traveling, the reason why you're going to lose your gains is because you're not eating enough yeah. or not eating like the right foods or frequently enough or anything. So prepare yourself ahead of time. Like, before the day before you travel, like think about, you know, how many meals you want to have that day and how many hours you're going to be in the airports and on the planes and everything yeah. and try to pack the right amount of food. And we make trail mix. Yeah. We have uh, like protein cookies. Like you guys just got to get creative in the kitchen, follow the recipes. Like Team Live Lean has a pile of recipes in their videos that you guys can follow. Um, I'm actually going to be doing my next prepared. episode just to give you guys a sneak peek is on um, like foods that like five easy snack meal slash ideas that you can do to make gains because we're always talking about weight loss food but i, I like want it. i'm doing a video on how to make gains we're type both of foods, like healthy gains and we're both on the game train right now because right exactly because it's relevant to us i lost 10 pounds when i had my sickness for five days flat on the bed and you're I'm actually like lighter now than you were before down. you were pregnant. Yeah, because of the breastfeeding, guys. Breastfeeding birds mad calories. So I'm just trying to keep up. So we both lately have been looking for good like snack slash meal ideas to increase our daily calories to get us on the gain train because we don't want to lose weight. Yeah. Sometimes in your fitness journey, you don't want to lose weight. So that's a good question. Also try to work out when you're traveling. Like just cause you're traveling doesn't mean you can't work out. Try to fit it in, but then also eat, eat a lot. Okay, so Anna says on Twitter, do you eat fish? If you do, what type of fish? Greetings yes. From Portugal. We do eat fish. Um, you'll We've had this question on here before. Yeah, we? you'll About notice seafood? that we tend to not cook fish as much at home. 
Yeah. Um, but I always make it a fact when I'm out to eat that I always order salmon or something else. And like, I think we talked about this question before, but yeah. um, when you're in a condo building, like cooking fish can kind of smell a little bit. <laughs> Um, but we do, we do have tuna fish. I just said tuna fish. I know. He makes fun of me for saying tuna fish. <laughs> You're rubbing off about on canned me. tuna. It's just tuna, people. It's, it's just tuna. tuna. Fish. So occasionally I'll have tuna. Like um, I have tuna in my office right now, just in the can, sitting in there if I need a quick protein snack. Um, but other than that, I, we take fish oils. Mm -hmm. So I take fish oil. So I get my omega-3s every day from fish oil. But we tend to just eat fish on. Occasionally canned salmon, we've had a couple of times. I just ordered scallops at the restaurant we were at last yep. night. So yeah, like you said, we like to get our seafood out instead scallops. of making it at home. Scallops. 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 But yeah, definitely like we consider fish and seafood to be a really healthy protein yep. source. So you definitely want to have it in your diet as much as you can. It just unfortunately stinks up your kitchen, but if it didn't, we would eat it more often. Yeah. And, it's, and it's easy to cook too. Like I remember yeah, I used easy, to bake yeah. a whole bunch of haddock or a whole bunch of so like white fish. I used to bake it in the oven mm -hmm. and just have it in Tupperware. So it's a great way to do it. I, I honestly, there's other than the smell, there's no, I like fish. I like the taste of it. So that there's no other reason other than mm -hmm. just that. Like the health benefits, so. like it keeps you lean. It's good food source. But so yes, the answer was we do eat it. Okay, next question from Lisa Carlton on Twitter says, when stevia sweetened food isn't always available, what are the worst artificial sweeteners and which are the best of the bad bunch? Okay, so what we have artificial sweeteners, we have like typically in a restaurant, you're gonna see like sweet and low. Um, stevia is actually not that common to find. No. It's usually sweet and low and equal and regular sugar, Yeah, right? but those, those are, are like the three. But that's a brand. Okay, so, so you're the, talking about like types, like aspartame, sucralose. Yeah, so. What else is there? Um, there's, I don't even Dextrose. know. Dextrose? It's like the stuff, acylfame K or something like that. Like, um, yeah, dextrose is another one. But yeah. um, I tend to, if there's no stevia there and I need a sweetener, I tend to go to the sucralose. I think um, my understanding and my research is that sucralose would be the best of the bad bunch. Yeah, I would opt for no sweetener at all, but that's, I kind of have trained my taste buds because like early on in my fitness career, when I discovered that sugar wasn't good for you, I just decided I'm <laughs> not going to eat it. Wasn't good I know, dis I did. I discovered that because when I was younger, I had no idea. I was like, oh, it is just, I like the taste of it. It's good. But then you get to a point where you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be eating this. Yeah. So I just kind of cut out sugar like cold turkey. And I personally, I don't know if this is just like, Everyone has their own like flavor preferences, but I don't like coffee with sugar in it. I don't like sugary drinks like soda or fruit punch or whatever. I just don't like it. Like it doesn't taste good to me. So I guess that's lucky. Um, but yeah, I think if I had the choice between something unsweetened or something stevia sweetened or something artificially sweetened, I would just choose the unsweetened one every time. Just yeah. that would just be me. I would like, go. I just don't prefer it sweet yeah. anyway. I would go stevia. I put stevia in my coffee. But if you didn't have the stevia, would you go for the uh, artificial or the unsweet? For coffee? Just for anything. I would go black. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our yeah. choice is like if we had to choose stevia or black or the other sweetener, we would just go black yeah. or just what's a, not black, but if it's like iced tea, go brown. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have tip it two says, hey guys, I'm six weeks pregnant and I did a lot of weight training and HIIT before. Can I still work out the way I did before? Well, let's pass that over to the pregnancy <laughs> queen. Congratulations. Am I the queen of pregnancies now that yes, I've had one? You yeah, are. the queen. Um, so congratulations on the bun in the oven. Super exciting. Um, you, at six weeks, you're not even showing it. You are in the very early stages of your pregnancy. Right now, more than ever during your pregnancy, you need to be careful with exercise yeah, because the um, egg hasn't really attached itself to the uterine wall just yet. So you're really not in the clear to start exercising until you're past that 12 week point. And this is, you know, one of those general guidelines. It's different for everybody. Um, you don't have to listen to this advice, but I know for me with my pregnancy, I was like, I ain't taking no chances. Like it was important to me to be m like overly careful just in case, because yeah. like, I don't know, just be the worst thing in the world if you exercise too hard. And that was the reason for a miscarriage. Yeah. Just, I would just say like, remember what your why is like, what is most important to you at this moment? Is it to like kill it in the gym 
or is it to brew the baby in, in the... And brew that baby. Brew the baby, <laughs> right? So just keep yeah. thinking long term. Um, you know, once you have the, the pregnancy, once you have the baby, you know, and then you have a few weeks recovery, then you can get right back into it. But just, you know, at this point, you're so early, I would be cautious. Yeah, and honestly, you're, I know a lot of women like freak out, like they're gonna lose their fitness or become yeah. completely unfit after Look nine months of like working out gently. But yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope I can be an example of how you're not losing anything when you're having a yep. child. You can be as healthy and fit as ever. You're just in a different phase of your life. It's a different stage. And yep. pregnancy doesn't take your fitness away from you. It just changes it. So I would say work out differently. Don't do high intensity stuff right now, but you can still do plenty of workouts. And if you need workouts, I created an entire program called livelinpregnancy.com that takes you all the way through your full term of pregnancy. Yep. So Good point. you can see exactly what I recommend and don't recommend for you at this phase. Okay, next question on Facebook from Kathy Figueroa says, what are your thoughts, opinions on uh, quinoa? I know it's not necessarily paleo, but the macros are actually not bad at all. What do you think? Yeah, we like quinoa. We definitely use it sometimes. I wouldn't call it a staple yeah. in our diet. It's not something we have like weekly, but we definitely like it. And I, you know, I definitely think the macros on it are better than other. Well, it's a complete protein type. as well. Like, if, yeah. um, there's debate on is quinoa a grain or is it a seed? A seed like, some yeah. people say it's a grain, some people say it is. I think it's technically a seed. it's a seed, right? Um, I I think the way that it affects your body, like the blood sugar in your body, affects it more as if it's a grain than if it's a seed. Um, so that's it's kind of in that no man's that's, land. That's grain my area. take on yeah. it. Is um, but if you are to have, a, if you do classify it as a grain and you're going to have a grain, then quinoa, in my opinion, would be the way to go because, like I said, it's a complete protein, has a complete amino acid profile. Um, Definitely lower glycemic index. It's lower than glycemic, other like you said. Um, it's um, the macros are good on it, mm -hmm. and it's high in protein, the thing with yeah. with quinoa, from a taste perspective, is it absorbs the taste of whatever you're cooking in. So if you just make quinoa and just have it like plain, like it is, doesn't taste good. But if you add it into your right. stir fry, yeah. it will absorb the flavors from from the vegetables, from the yeah. sauce or the spices that you add to it, and it's very good. So I would go quinoa before I would go rice. Mm -hmm. All right, our next question is Celeste773. She says, hi Brad and Jess, I've been watching your shows for a few years, love listening to all you have to say and the tips you give, awesome. Um, very inspiring. My question is about my new lifestyle. I recently got married and before that was working three jobs with only an hour break, which I used to work out mostly cardio and I saw a trainer two days a week after getting married, the honeymoon, the holiday weight amped up. I want to get back to my lifestyle, but it's different with a husband. He doesn't like a lot of veggies and always wants at least one starch in his meals. He's from the South. He likes his meat marinated mm -hmm. or fully flavored and he hates sweet potato. What kind of foods can I make that he'll like and might help me get back on track with my health? Or should I just cook two meals, one for me, one for him? Yeah, I mean, Optimally, you would do what you just said, the latter. <laughs> Cook two meals. Cook two meals. I know it's going to be a pain in the butt, but it's one of these things, guys, that you know you are in complete control. Like You have to take 100% responsibility for yourself, mm -hmm. not for your significant other. You can guide your significant other, not nag your significant mm, yeah, other. Yeah, I was going to say, be careful but, there. <laughs> but, you can set, but don't nag, set the example. So if, right. by doing what you're doing, he's going to see the changes happening in your body, your energy levels, you're happier, you're nicer to him because you're feeling good. <laughs> he's going to see that, and then he's going to be like, I want to jump on the game train as well, the live lean train as well. Yeah. And you, know, you can slowly build that in there. But honestly, it's from the get-go. Like you, you can't take the excuse that because my husband's eating this, then I have to eat this, and so it's his fault that I'm getting out of shape because he wants to eat this way. No, mm -hmm. you are in control. You are responsible. Yeah, I think you have to be really careful in this situation not to make yourself feel deprived or not to like see your eating through deprived looking glass. You know what I mean? If you're serving him that and you are over here and you're like, I have to eat broccoli and plain chicken, because but I want to lose weight, but <laughs> yeah. he gets to eat whatever he yeah. wants. Like it's not, that's not the case. Like you have to change your mental attitude about it and realize that I always tell people this, it's not that you get to or don't get to, it's you're deciding what you want more. Do you want more to have like mashed potatoes and greasy ribs and French fries and whatever? Or do you want that kick in body, that amazing energy, yeah. that vitality, everything that you're gaining by eating healthy? Like try to keep your view on what you're getting instead of what you're giving up. I'm gonna throw this out to you too. Too. Like I always say, like one of the life skills that people need to learn is how to cook. 
and mm -hmm. how you can turn real food into stuff that's freakingly delicious. And Absolutely. We, and we did that. We proved that in our LiveLean20Diet.com program. Yeah. I guarantee you that if you have that program, you go through the meal plan, you make the food for him, he will like... Eight out of ten recipes, because there's always something there that yeah, like absolutely. it's real food, it's delicious. Like go try that out if you haven't yet. You can make the same food, eat the same food, and trick him into thinking it's Yeah, the other suggestion I have for you, and this, you know, might surprise you a little bit, but you could take more of an IFYM approach where it's like if it fits your macros and eat the same exact foods he's eating, but just figure out what kind of portion size yeah. you need to fulfill your macro goals. And then you could get a bang in body and still be eating whatever your husband's eating, but you just need to know when enough is enough. Like, yeah. you know, like the portion sizes might be shockingly small because when it comes to like really heavy foods, the port, you know, the portion sizes need to go down. Yeah, it's so. not. A, it's not about perfection, guys. Like if you're making him fried chicken or whatever it is, you could have a small piece of fried chicken totally. and still enjoy it and still Absolutely. get good results. I think that's what I would do. Like if you were kind of eating like greasy foods and stuff, instead of not eating what you're eating, I think I would eat what you're eating, but just make it fit my portions. Yeah, I'd feel better doing that than having like an entirely separate meal. Okay, next question on Twitter from Yamil. Murillo says, hi, in 2014, I weighed 193 pounds and I went to 148 in 2015. Wow. Now I'm 163 pounds, hit plateau, I eat mostly paleo and work out six days. Okay. So, so wait, what's the question? Well, though? I guess, oh. I mean, if you just look into, that's what she said, but if you look into it, I just think it's like, how do I break through this plateau? Yeah. Wait, so, so did the weight go down and then back up? It was at 148 and went to 163 so she went back up so we're, we're gonna assume here that 148 was the goal yeah. or like preferred yeah. weight to be at so sometimes the the reason for weight fluctuations happening i think is um it's usually like when someone goes on a really strict like what do you call it like a spree you know like a short a binge. time period no the opposite of a binge like when they're really being healthy and like doing everything perfect for a while and then they get to their breaking point and just can't do it anymore mm -hmm. and then the weight goes back up which is why we're always preaching to you guys lifestyle Ooh, lifestyle balance. lifestyle balance like still have pizza once a week because yeah. you know why it's going to keep you going a lot longer your weight loss might be slower but you are going to stay there longer and not have that yo-yo effect so I, and I would also throw out there like, what's your workouts like? Like what program are you following? I repeat, what program are you following? Or are you just walking into the gym, looking around, what machine is free, doing everything in your comfort zone, lifting the same weight you've always lifted, the same rep schemes, the same tempos, the same everything. That is what a plateau is. Yeah. In order to break through that, you gotta do things differently. So get on a program, because you I'm sure you would have told us you were on a program if you were. Yeah. So you probably aren't. I would say get on a program, follow a meal plan with recipes and everything else. Hint, hint, everything that we provide to like yeah. Team Live Lean members. Um, and then we'll see what happens to your plateau when you start doing things differently. You yeah. gotta get out of your own head, allow someone else to take over for you and tell you exactly what to do. Then it's up to you to execute on it. Yeah, it's always kind of shocking to us, you guys, like how many of you are asking for help yet you haven't even tried any of our programs yeah. that we offer. We're like, what is going on here? We're not getting the strong enough point across that programs are life changing. That's changed us. <laughs> yes. Like I invested money I did not yes. have. Our programs are nowhere close to being as expensive as what I initially invested back in 2007 and look where it brought me today. Yeah, it's so, so true. Like, the prices have gone down we're, because there's so many programs available. So it's like the cheapest way you can change yeah. your life. I mean guys, like we're so passionate about this and it's hard for us to talk about because people think, oh, you just want to make money off us. No, not at all. this changed our life. You yeah. have to put money in the game to take action and really get the results that you want to actually take you out of your comfort zone. So yeah. like I'm getting super passionate about this. So take it for what it's worth, but I would highly recommend you get on a program, throw some money into the game. Yeah. Next question. Our next question is from Dex2 Reels. Says I've been working out for just over two years now. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't working my legs. Oh bro. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> I've been hitting legs consistently now for about six to seven months. Hey, good job, bro. You want to know why? Because he invested he in a program. No, he bought a program. <laughs> yeah. He knows if you're getting my programs, you're going to be doing legs. <laughs> 
Um, the squats are paying off. Woo! Where I can see muscle definition in my legs, but I'm still lagging the size in my legs, like the thickness. Any tips on how to help with this problem, or should I have more patience? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say patience, but that's... Yeah, he already knows You, you. already know that. Yeah. Um, it takes time, like, a lot of people ha have nagging body parts. And for a lot of people... Parts that just don't want to change. It's tough to get your legs to grow. Yeah, so, especially if you're like an ectomorph body type yeah. already, which sounds like you probably are if you're a hard gainer, you know? When you get on a muscle gaining program, you want to be like the Incredible Hulk instantly, but it's yep. not, it doesn't really so work like that. So I'll throw it out to you, Dex. One thing I want you to focus on during your next leg workout is I just did an episode I know on what you're going to say. T -t -t yeah. Tempo. Yeah. So tempo. So time under tension. Yes. Um, too many people just go up and down, up and down without really contracting the muscle and just wrapping it out. And that's okay when you're doing that for strength gains. Or even for fat loss goals. Well, Sometimes no. Well, fat works. loss. I for fat loss, I would still want you slow, mm -hmm. slower um, for the hormonal response, but especially for hypertrophy first, for muscle gain. You gotta keep the time under tension for the muscle. Typically it takes like 40 seconds for that muscle to stay tight in order for you to actually create the, uh, the, the tears in the muscle fibers to grow back stronger and bigger. So next squat day, next leg day, make sure, like, you know, just rather than even repping it out, set your timer, 40 seconds, and go up and down and keep going for 40 seconds. When the 40 seconds timer's up, you're good and really make sure you contract and squeeze the, the muscles. Yeah, you should be getting, if you're doing your tempo slow enough, you should be getting about six to 10 reps, I would say within that 40 second window. So we're talking very slow, like taking 40 seconds and doing only six reps, you're gonna have to move a lot slower than you think. So we dare you guys time yourself, put a timer yeah. on, see how many reps you're getting within 40 seconds. If it's more than eight, you're probably repping too well, fast. So that's what I'm saying is, so like for instance, on a squat, I would have you going in the eccentric for four seconds. So one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four, no pause at the bottom, back up in one second. So that's five seconds. Mm -hmm. So you divide that by 40, that's eight reps. Right. So, so if, if you're, you're following, the, that, if you're following yeah. the right tempo in a 40 second scheme, you should be getting eight reps in on that squat using that tempo. Yeah. If you're getting like 15 or 20 reps within a 40 second window, then you're probably just up, down, up, yeah. down, up, down. And that's like, you're kind of missing the point of the lift. And you know, what's weird is when you're doing tempo reps, you're probably gonna lift a little bit less yeah. weight yeah. than you can do when you're lifting faster or doing more like sporadic yep. type reps. So just take your ego out of the picture, like set it aside. I know it's hard, especially for dudes who are wanting to get strong and massive and everything. They are always thinking in terms of more weight, more weight, more weight. But it's, sometimes the answer is less weight yeah. and slower tempo. And if you're doing the tempos right, your legs are gonna be burning. Yeah. It's gonna be so different. I was gonna say, so do that tempo but do 60% of your one rep max. Yeah. So figure out like on a squat, like what your, and I know you, that you did liveleanstrength.com, so you should know what your one rep max is because that's part of the testing protocol. Then multiply that number by 0.6 and do that weight. So if your one rep max is 200 on a squat, you're gonna be doing, um, we'll just say 100 on a squat, <laughs> you're gonna be doing 60 pounds for your squat. Mm -hmm. So try that out. It may not seem like a lot of weight, but when you're following that tempo, it's gonna get you. Next question yeah. on Snapchat from Kareen Demare says, I am trying to lean out as much as possible, so I was wondering what do you think is best to eat between a whole plantain and two Ezekiel toasts? They are two of my favorite treats at the moment, and I'm wondering if I had to choose one, which would be the healthiest and has less carbs or calories in it? All right, so when it comes to like figuring out what the carbs and calories are of certain foods, a lot of times I'll just use Google to yeah. be completely honest with you guys. If I have this question, cause you know, I'm not like a library of calories and carb calculations in my head. Sometimes I need a little help too. I'm like, you know, I, I'm not even sure on a plantain cause that's one I haven't even looked up cause we don't, do we have plantains no. available in San Diego? I don't know. I, I, yeah, we eat bananas instead. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I haven't had a plantain. I haven't bought a plantain. I don't usually cook with them, so I don't really know what their macros are. But I would just Google it. You know, plantain nutrition facts, yeah. and you'll well, usually just you'll come up with a yeah, or even just it calories or grams of carbs. Top. Yeah, it's like high in the search, you'll find a lot of information on plantains just by searching it on the web. So that's what I would do for you. And then, um, or it's what I would suggest that you do and then compare the two and make an informed decision yeah. based on the real numbers. So. so if I was to take calories and macros out of it and it was just to say, what's a better food for you to eat? Plantains, hands down. Cause it's a natural Bam. one ingredient 
yeah. earth grown food. Yeah. I mean, Versus Ezekiel, Ezekiel bread is like, Ezekiel healthy. bread is good. Like yeah. we occasionally have Ezekiel bread. Yeah. Um, and, but it is a processed food. It's not as doesn't, it doesn't come from really the ground. It's processed before you can eat it. Where a plantain, you can pretty much go to town. Right Kill away. and eat. Well, I don't know. Don't you have to cook plantains? Do you eat them raw? Uh, yeah. I'm not too up on plantains, but I know, forgive us, but we just, they're not really in our uh, diet, so we don't know much about plantains. But, but I would I say, would just I would go say, for those and if those are your treats, then you're doing good. Yeah, awesome job because our treats are worse than that. <laughs> okay, so Prophet Three says, Brad, do you take any supplements during your fast, like fish oil, vitamins, and BCAs, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, um, BCA. I think they're talking about your daily fast, right? Like with yeah. intermittent fasting, so, so just in the mornings. Yeah, so it would be BCAs would be the number one thing. So BCAs are just think of BCAs <laughs> as like the ozone layer that goes over your muscle so mm -hmm. it protects your muscle when you're in a fasted state so I train fasted so I don't have anything in my system um, other than like a coconut oil coffee and uh, pre-workout but so I'll have BCAs in my pre-workout when I go train what about fish oil and vitamins fish, I, I stick with my fish oils and so vitamins are a lot of vitamins are fat soluble so you need to have fats in order for them to actually absorb in your body a lot of people kind of forget that. So they're taking vitamin, like fat soluble vitamins and they're just on an empty stomach and it's not gonna absorb as well as if you had it with a fat source. So I have that. You just poo them out. I have that, at, or you pee them out. So <laughs> I have that um, with a meal when I get home as along with my fish oil. Yeah, so hopefully that answers that question. I think that was the last one. That's the last one, people. So. Whoa, that was a good show. I got all worked up there with uh, one of the questions, but you know, it's just we're trying to we're trying to get it through to people that you know, if you have a goal in mind, you have to have a plan that's going to get Absolutely. you there. Yeah, and you and just and that's the same for every goal in life. Like you guys probably know in your professional career and your personal life, everything you need to have an end in mind and like a vision for what you're trying to achieve. And then follow a good, solid, Steps like step by step there. program that's gonna get you there. Yeah, so, so I mean, just like go to our testimonials page on our website, see when people are taking action, see the results that they get. And you know, they're no different than you. The only difference is they're taking action and they're investing in their health. So yeah. we'll just leave it at that. Hopefully, you guys take that, you run with it. Um, so, what's the question of the day? Um. Let's throw this question of the day out there. What workout program are you on right now? Mm -hmm. If you're not on one, say, I'm not on one. If you are on one, even if it's not one of ours, you know, more power to you. As long as you're at least you're on a workout program, tell us down below what it is. And if you have any questions on which workout program is best for you, we'll be sure to help you down in the comment section as well. Yeah. The other one more point I want to make about programs is try not to be a program hopper because yeah. I used to be kind of like this where I would just like sample a lot of different programs and never actually do any of them. Mm. So let's be clear about the difference between sampling a program and doing yeah. one. It's like, like commitment makes a difference. Doing it for like three days and be like, this program is not yeah, for me. I don't like, like it. I'm going to yeah. move on to it's funny. It's, 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 sometimes you're not going to like what's on your program for that day, but you still do it. It's funny because fortunately I'm like the opposite. Like, you know me, yeah, like when I start something, the, yeah. I'm sticking to it to the end. Even and, if we watch like a TV show and it's terrible, he'll have to finish yeah, the season. Or a movie. It's like, I you know <laughs> yeah. I started it. I got to finish it. Or a reading a book. I started yeah. it. I got to finish it. No, I'm more of like a sampler. Yeah. But. So, um, you know, that's, that's the, the tip out there guys that if you're, you know, finishing if, something start to finish yeah. is really where, where the gains are at. So, you know, sometimes it won't be your favorite thing to do and you'll be questioning, why am I even doing this? But yeah. stick to it and you will not regret yeah. it. Yeah. But hopefully you do enjoy the workouts because there's a lot. Yeah, of, we hope you enjoy them. We try we, to make them fun. We try to make yeah. them enjoyable because yeah. we know that's very important for people. Yeah. All right. So that's it. If fitness wasn't fun and it didn't give results, we wouldn't be doing it either. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, we'll see you at the next episode. Make sure you check us out on the podcast. You can be listening to mm -hmm. us as opposed to looking at us if you want. If you find us annoying looking, um, <laughs> keep us in your ear. It's so it's such a benefit thing to do when you're training or you're walking the dog or you're on uh, doing the dishes, the doing drive your meal prep, to work, that's when I do on it. the subway, wherever you are, mm -hmm. you can be hanging out with us. So yeah. thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you at the next episode. Thanks for watching. And keep living lean. 
Muy. Shout out to all our Live Lean podcast listeners. We love you and would so appreciate it if you would give this podcast a review. We need your feedback to improve and grow. So please give us a review right now.